Hi, Pop Tropicans. It's Captain Crawfish. I'm going to help you play through part one of Arabian Nights How Bizarre. As always, this video contains spoilers, so if you don't want to know what happens, or if you want to figure it out for yourself, wait to watch the video until later. We're very excited to be bringing Arabian Nights to you because this was the winner of our Create Your Dream Island contest. It was submitted by Sarah from South Carolina. Sarah, we just want to say thanks for your idea and your inspiration. We hope you like playing this as much as we enjoyed making it. Let's get started. First things first, let's try to figure out exactly what's going on here. So we talk to this guy and he tells us that the Sultan is hiding from the 40 thieves. Good to know. And we'll talk to this merchant here. He says he wants to trade. However, we have nothing to trade at the moment. Also, good to know. Finally, let's head over to the left and see what's going on here. We'll see that we're at the exterior of a palace, but naturally it's under guard and these two will frog march you out of here. Let's keep exploring. To the right of the main bazaar scene, we'll find this sort of ruined scene, and we'll talk to this gentleman here and try to find out exactly what's been happening. We have a fair amount of useful information at this point. We know we want to trade, we know we can't get into the palace, and we know that if we put something down here, the thieves will probably come and steal it. The last thing we want to know is, where might these thieves be hiding? He tells us, probably in the caves. There's only one place left for us to explore, so we head to the right, through this oasis. Here we find a dangerous looking cliffs area. We have some scorpions running around here, some pits of quicksand, and even some pointy bones of some long deceased animal. But if you just follow the path I'm following here, you make it through to this cave entrance without much trouble. We'll need to explore this cave fully, and a lot of what we'll do to make that happen is push these crates around to create platforms, and we'll make kind of a big spiral shaped path around this cave. See, I'm pushing this crate to the left, and also finding that it certainly doesn't seem like there's a den of thieves in this cave. It seems a little bit empty, but I'm not done exploring, so keep pushing these crates, keep seeing what there is to see. Past this quicksand, we do find something. It's the skeleton of a long-gone explorer, and he is holding something valuable, some salt crystals. But there are definitely no thieves in this cave. However, with the salt crystals, we can start to unravel exactly what's going on here. So you'll notice this gentleman here was telling us if we left something here, it would disappear. So let's try it for ourselves. Leave a salt crystal there, exit the scene, and then come back. What do we find? But the salt has vanished. So now we know a little something else. We're putting it all together. If we leave something there, it seems as though the 40 thieves will come steal it. But we need to catch them in the act, and so far we're not sure how. We can start trading now that we have the salt. So if you talk to any merchant and offer them something, they'll offer you something in return. For instance, this one will give you grain in exchange for salt. Let's take the grain head over to the merchant on the right. Now this is a bit of a red herring, but I want to show it to you because I think it's funny. And you may find yourself attempting to do this as well. You can trade the grain for that magical looking lamp. And if you are familiar with the Arabian Nights mythology, this seems like a great idea. Uh, unfortunately, she sold you a bill of goods. It's not a magical lamp at all. Let's see what else we can find from these traders go back to this one, and if we trade our salt, we'll get the grain again. The 
good thing is you can keep going through this trading system as much as you want, so it's impossible to fail. If you don't have the right thing, you just go back and try again. If we take the grain to this gentleman, we'll be able to trade it for a stack of cloth. Head back to the upper level, and we'll see what we can get for the cloth from this guy. And he gives us something pretty helpful. It's a spyglass. All we need to do now is find a place where we can use this spyglass, and we don't have to go too far to find that. We head over to this minaret and climb to the top, where there's a convenient stand. Use the spyglass, and your character will place it in the stand, and then you can click to look through it. What do we see when we look through it? Well, it's that stone platform and the guy who keeps warning us about the thieves. So nothing yet, but perhaps we can lure the thieves to the platform and then catch them in the act. I'll place my salt crystal here again, as I already know the thieves will come steal it, and then come back up here and look back through the spyglass. There's my salt crystal. And there are two very dangerous looking people. And in a puff of smoke they have sconed with my salt, but it does look like they've left something behind. What I'll do next is go check that out and see what it is that they left behind. We can pick up the item on the platform and see that it is smoke bombs. We'll equip this from the menu and then press spacebar to throw a bomb, or action button if we're playing on mobile. This will actually work on any character that you see. It'll momentarily stun them. It's, it's a funny effect, but I promise nobody gets hurt. We'll head back to the palace and jump onto these platforms above the guards. You'll see they're perhaps a little bit lazy, maybe a little unconcerned with the security of the palace. Uh, but we'll just stand up here and eavesdrop for a few minutes. Only once they are standing close together can we throw the smoke bomb, and it'll distract both of them, giving us enough time to get in through the door. So here we are inside the palace, but it sure doesn't look like the room full of riches that we were promised. In fact, it's mostly empty, except for this sultan. So let's talk to him and see what he has to say. He doesn't care about his treasure except for a lamp that is like no other. Well, that gives us some idea. It's obviously not the one we found earlier because we know there was nothing interesting about that lamp. It was in fact like every other. He will however give us his last jewel and we're going to be able to use this to open up a second level of trading. By going to the bazaar with this jewel, we'll be able to trade for much more valuable things. This is pretty simple if you know what to do. Talk to this guy and offer him the crown jewel will offer you an ivory camel statuette. With the ivory camel, we'll head to the first level and talk to the guy who has the real life camel. Believe it or not, he's actually willing to offer us the bridle for his real camel, which is, I guess, useful. Uh, we'll open up our inventory, and if we use the bridle, it will allow us to take control of this camel. So that's what we'll do. When you use it, you'll automatically take control of the camel, but if you run too fast, it doesn't like that too much. So in fact, you need to go slowly and just take it one step at a time. Leave the camel all the way to the platform and leave him there. Now go back and again look through the spyglass. And there they are again. Once again they try to escape, but as we know, this is a stubborn camel and the smoke bomb only lasts for so long. So we can keep an eye on the thief now as it attempts to lead the camel back to wherever it is that they take all of their stolen goods. Watch him go back to this little oasis and say a very important line, open sesame, and that opens the entrance to the cave.
Well, now we know where the thieves are taking all of the stolen things, and we know how to get into their hideout. So we head to this oasis and say the line. Lo and behold. Now who knows what we'll find inside? So we'll have to wait until episode 2 of Arabian Nights, because that's the end of part 1. Thank you for watching this video, and thank you very much for playing Pop Tropica.